is required, sir. Yeah, yeah. Are no issues without video also. Yeah, you are starting. Uh, if you don't have any issue, we can record. Can we record? Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you can record, sir. I am asking about my video because due to network issues only, I turned off. Ah, my you video. can, you can, yeah, you can, you can stop it. You are streaming. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Session you can record. There is no issue. Yeah, very good morning to all of you. Uh, am I audible, right? Hello. Yes, yes. You please yeah. carry on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. So myself, Dr. B. Pratap Reddy, I am working as an assistant professor uh, at uh, Electrical Engineering Department at IIT Indoor. Today I am going to present on a topic, Innovative Electrical Machines for Sustainable Electrified Future. Here, two terms I have to stress, like one is innovative, other is sustainable. So as we all are know that we are moving towards the electric vehicles, right, from the fossil fuel vehicles. So will it be the electric vehicles are really sustainable? Uh, I have shown one image here, left corner one image and the top right corner one more image. So from these two images, we can visualize that whether it is electric or not with respect to the source perspective. So one more aspect is what are the th different type of components we are utilizing inside the vehicle. For example, batteries are there and machines are there and other uh, inverters like power converters and other uh, components like ACs, uh, uh, lights, all other things. Mainly powertrain aspects, we have power converters and batteries and electrical machines. So if millions of vehicles are come into the picture take either battery or electrical machine so this talk is related to mainly machines so i will take the machine as an example so if millions of vehicles are on the roads so will it be really sustainable because most of the electric vehicles are using permanent magnet based machines so at the end of the day, again, we have to look back to what kind of machines we have to utilize to make it electric vehicles as a sustainable after five years or 10 years down the line. But if millions of vehicles comes into the uh, picture, then that problem will arise. That's why sustainable with respect to the machine design is required. Second thing is innovative. Like with respect to the exist existing electrical machines, what are the requirements for electric vehicle? Like for starting high torque required, for running high speeds required. So to meet these two requirements, DC series motor is the best motor compared to all electrical machines. But we are using DC series motor in the electric, electric vehicles means answer is no. Why? There are some challenges are there with respect to the brushes and commutators and sparking, thermal management and uh, conductor size and etc. So because of those reasons, we are not picking the DC series motor. Otherwise, the torque speed characteristics of the DC series motor will exactly match us with respect to the IC engine. So I will discuss in detail about those things in the coming slides. So with respect to the innovations in the existing electrical machines and sustainability by avoiding the permanent magnets, we have to look into the uh, in future. So the flow of this presentation is as follows. Firstly, I will explain about the different powertrains of the vehicles in terms of existing electric vehicles, uh, Tesla models and Nissan models, uh, Tata Nexon model and different, different things. And the challenges with respect to the existed powertrains and then why we uh, look for multi-phase machines and what is the need of it and how it can be beneficial for present electric electric vehicle and pole phase modulated drives as a part of multi-phase machines. I will explain the pole phase modulation induction motor drives for EVs and what are the innovations can be possible like it is a kind of uh, open questions kind of uh, slide. So we can anyone can work on those kind of open questions. So I, I am showing here how the EV trend is going on. Uh, in India, how the EV adoption is happening from 2018 to 2023, we can see here almost it increased by 10 times. 
So the EV era is started, but we have to look towards the sustainability. And similarly, global aspects, we can see the electric vehicles projection or adoption. And with respect to the power drive, the types of electric vehicles are classified into low duty, medium duty and heavy duty vehicles. Uh, in terms of low duty vehicles, the battery rating is less than 25 kilowatt hour. And once if we will charge the battery, full charge, then we can travel to 50 kilometers. And the, you at present PLDC machines and induction machines and hub motors we are utilizing. The ratings of these machines will be 10 to 30 kilowatt. One example we can see here, uh, our Vola models, our Bajaj and TVS model, TVS IQ also there. And medium duty electric vehicles we can see here, battery rating is 120 to uh, 25 kilowatt hour in that range. And once if we will charge the battery fully, then we can travel. 365 kilometers and we are uh, they are utilizing the induction motors and permanent magnet synchronous machines and the power rating of the electrical machines are 80 to 100 kilowatt with respect to the uh, earlier models like the models which built before 2005 15 and 2016 but nowadays the rating of the machines are not limited it reached already 600 kilowatt and people are keep on uh, uh, increasing their power ratings of the machine. Why they are increasing? Also, I will tell in the coming slides. And examples, Tesla Model S or Nissan Leaf S Plus, we can see. And heavy duty vehicles are not for the uh, personal vehicles, like uh, transportation kind of vehicles, either buses or trucks, etc. So where the battery ratings are greater than 160 kilowatt hour, and once if we will charge the battery, 136 kilometers, and the induction machines are the and PMSMs are the suitable candidates for this type of heavy duty vehicles. And uh, the motor rating is greater than 100 kilowatt, and it can be anywhere around 600 kilowatt as per the present trend. And what are the bottlenecks for the electric vehicles in the present scenario? If we will discuss, one is higher cost, especially in terms of batteries and magnetless machine. Uh, sorry, magnet based machines. And remaining all are similar to the conventional vehicles. Only the drivetrain is the uh, change with respect to the fossil fuel and uh, EVs. And then charging infrastructure. The crucial part of the electric vehicles adoption is the charging infrastructure. Home charging is possible always, but it is the overnight charging. So DC fast charging stations are not available at present in our country. Slowly, it is uh, we are building up. But in Europe and uh, US, the so many charging stations are already developed. The necessity of this charging station, at least within a five kilometer radius or 10 kilometer radius, one DC fast charging station should be there. The adoption will be uh, much higher rates, similar to our petrol pumps. So we can see the petrol pumps within a one kilometer radius in all cities and even in the villages also we can see at least one pump in 10 kilometers radius so the next thing is the range anxiety that is vehicle range the vehicle range is directly depends upon the what kind of load acting on it including the um, uh, human load as well as the vehicle crab weight and as well as the battery rating so we can't, uh, to increase the vehicle range, we can't increase the battery rating or battery weight, battery volume and weight will increase. Again, who has to take care of this weight and volume means uh, machine has to take care. So weight, overall weight of the vehicle will increase, then the machine has to generate more torque. So everything is interlinked. So we have to select an optimal way such that range should be comp uh, range should not be compromised as well as uh, vehicle efficiency or drivetrain efficiency uh, should not be compromised. And investors for quick transform uh, quick transformation or quick adoption uh, like uh, at present the Indian government is giving so many subsidies subsidies for EV adoptions and uh, we can uh, get it. To, through that subsidies or EMI schemes are available. So those things we have to explore and we have to get it uh, for the EV adoption. And next thing is not completely zero carbon. The vehicles are, uh, if we are charging 
in the electric vehicles based upon the energy which is generated from the fossil fuel resources like coal power plants or uh, petrol or diesel stations then it is completely not a electric vehicles so it is not a sustainable so we have to charge the evs from the renewable energy systems either it can be solar wind uh, fuel cells uh, hydro power plants and etc especially coal we should not use and uh, fossil, uh, petrol and diesel things uh, we should not use then we can say it as electric vehicle and then limited choice of the vehicles and uh, the limited choice is one thing and cost is the other thing both are side by side so which addition we have to take or which version of vehicle we have to take and limited service and maintenance this is another uh, key challenge for example onboard charger is there if a simple diode gone also the local service station uh, technicians and local service people don't know what happened in that complete circuit uh, we can't scan and we can't get it where the where is the accurate exact fault so for that we have to replace complete uh, board of the onboard charger so it will be the uh, it will increase the maintenance cost as well as the uh, skilled technicians required and battery technology to support the charging structure fast dc fast charging so battery technology has to support so in order to charge the battery overnight so we have to pump some very small magnitudes of uh, currents but if you want to charge the same battery within 1 hour or within 30 minutes we have to pump lot of currents uh, for that battery sh is should be capable to take the higher magnitudes of currents so battery technology also has to be uh, advanced then the charging times can come drastically as well as battery lifetime we can increase and advancements in electrical machines so i will focus with respect to the uh, advancements in the electrical machines in this presentation so coming to the power train of the vehicle what is required so we want to design an electrical machine for uh, electric vehicle right so basically what are the things we should consider so whether it can be a ic engine vehicle or electric vehicle what are the forces we will encounter is driving force and drag force with respect to the air resistance if you are walking some kind of air resistance we will uh, see if you are running at 5 kilometers per hour or 10 kilometers per hour we will see some kind of air resistance same way for vehicle also there is a air resistance and a rolling resistance with respect to the uh, frictional things and uh, uh, example gradients or uh, uh, hilly stations etc so all these forces we have to overcome and we have to drive the vehicle and on top of that and what speed we have to drive the vehicle also matters for example 100 kilometers per hour or 200 kilometers per hour so based upon all these aspects we have to design the drive train so it is same for both ic engine as well as electric vehicle so the thing is what are the key things required to design this kind of drive train or to meet this kind of uh, Uh, requirements tractive force tractive force if you want to generate what are the things required so first thing is for starting application we require the high starting torque because of air inertia and the low that is second thing is acceleration times plays the crucial role for example if you are designing a electrical machine to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds and the same 100 kilometers per hour to reach 5 seconds these are the two instances so the machine which we are designing the 100 kilometers per hour within 5 seconds will be a bulky and higher rating one if you want to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds there is no problem then we can design the some lower rated machine and for running condition we require the higher uh, speeds at lower torque so these two are the key requirements for any drive train any vehicle or any drive train and whether it can can be ic engine or electric vehicle so in ic engine how we are getting these two characteristics means with gear box along with the ic engine so whatever the torque and speeds generated by the ic engine we are uh, we are uh, modifying according to the gear box 
and we are delivering to the wheels. So basically, we will see the multi-stage gearbox such that during uh, lower uh, gear thing, we will get the higher torque and higher gear uh, things, we will get the uh, higher speeds. In electric vehicles, electric motor will deliver the required torque and speed. So gearbox will amplify the torque or speed according to the requirement. So uh, in general, multi-stage gearbox is not required in electric uh, drivetrain. Either it will be single speed or two uh, speed gearbox is required. Depends upon the torque speed. So whatever the mechanical power generated by these two systems will be torque into speed and vehicle velocity will be the revolutions per minute uh, of the drivetrain into 2 pi wheel radius by 60. These are the basic formulas. If we will follow, then we can get the speed of the vehicle. So we will discuss now existed electric vehicles. So first thing, if we will see the Tesla Model 3. So there are different type of uh, versions are available in this Tesla Model 3. And if we will see only the motor uh, prospective, interior permanent magnet machine, synchronous machine. And in the long range, AW means, AWD means, all right, where the front side as well as back side, all wheels can be controllable and it can be dual drive or all wheel drive will be there. So here we can see one, one motor is permanent magnet and second motor is induction motor. Induction motor is at front and uh, synchronous motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor is at the back side. And we can see the ratings of these motors. So think uh, rating is not specified here power rating okay but for the, the tesla cybertruck we can see here so here also different uh, versions are there the power rating of the machines will be we can see here 315 hp or 235 kilowatt this is only single motor based rear wheel drive system but dual motor all wheel drive based system we can see here 450 kilowatt and in the tri motor all wheel drive where three motors will be there front side as well as back side, including uh, both locations, we will see three motors. Rear side, two drives will be there and front side, one drive will be there. So here, two permanent magnet machines and one induction machines are used. And the rating we can see here, 630, including all three motors, 630 kilowatt is there. So the power rating is not limited. Why they are increasing power rating means one thing is acceleration times to reach 0 to 60 miles per hour with respect to the seconds only. And the wheel torque requirement also we can see here, uh, 1396 Newton meter is required here and 1000 Newton meter is required in the all wheel drive uh, condition. So to meet these torques and these speeds, top speed also we can see here 210 kilometers per hour. And these acceleration times, the motor rating is keep on increasing. So there is no boundary for that. As per the requirements, the rating of the machine is keep on changing. And same way we can see Porsche take on a vehicle where two permanent magnet synchronous motors are using and two versions I have shown here and the ratings of the machine also we can see here 560 kilowatt and 500 kilowatt and continuous power also mentioned here. And the e-tron model and Nissan Leaf models also we can see. The, my main objective to keep all these existed vehicles are what kind of machines we are utilizing the rating of that machine. That's it. Only these two aspects we have to look into all these existed powertrains. Here are two synchronous permanent magnet motors and here one synchronous permanent magnet motor. And the ratings with respect to the Nissan Leaf is 80 kilowatt only and torque we can see here 280 Newton meter. Whereas in the RD e-tron, the power output of the machine is 475 kilowatt. And same way Jaguar I-Pace, also permanent magnet machines and Tata Nexon, which is the most uh, selling uh, electric vehicle in our country. We can see here the rating of the machine is 110 kilowatt and motor torque is 250 Newton meter. And here we can't compare this Tata Nexon with Tesla Cybertruck or Tesla Model S. where motor ratings are different and acceleration times are different battery ratings are different so all depends upon what kind of requirements 
we are considering at the initial point of time to design the electrical machine. So here summary we can see till 2014 as per the some literature I have taken this data. So power density and peak torque and rotational speed and cooling, which type of cooling we are utilizing. So we are generating this much of 1000 Newton meter torque and 100 kilowatt rating of the motor. So in that case, thermal is a crucial, uh, thermal management will play a crucial role. So what kind of uh, cooling material we have to utilize or coolant we have to utilize means either it can be water or glycol, depends upon how efficient it is. And power density and specific power of the electrical motors which are using in these uh, models we can see in table 2 uh, if i'll take nissan leaf the power uh, peak power density is 4.2 kilowatt per liter and specific power is 1.4 kilowatt per kg with respect to the permanent magnet synchronous machine one machine and magnet weight is 1.895 kg and magnet mass per rating with respect to the kilowatt 23 grams per kilowatt so and in order to make the innovations and in order to increase the efficiency of the electrical machines what kind of materials we have to utilize especially with respect to the flux densities and thickness of the sheets we can see here so different type of samples and a different type of material composition like cobalt iron we can see here 49 percent of the cobalt and 49 percent of the iron and two percent of other materials and sheet thickness 0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 mm will be there and flux density with respect to the 0.8 kilo ampere per meter and flux density with respect to the 2.5 kilo ampere per meter we can see in terms of tesla so and material density with respect to the how much weight it will be there we can see here gram per centimeter cube so all these aspects we have to take while designing the machine so as per these uh, materials, we can see here at higher currents, this it is giving the uh, better flux densities. Other materials also may give this flux density 2.23 Tesla, but the thermal management will be easy for cobalt and iron uh, combination. Uh, with respect to the other materials, if we will design, we have to design the robust uh, thermal structure and coolant architecture. And different type of traction inverters, which are commercially available in EVs and hybrid electric vehicles, we can see here. And what is the DC link voltage? And at present, it reached to the 800 also, whatever the models I have shown Tesla Cybertruck and uh, Tata Avenia also coming up with 800 volts. It is not yet uh, released in the market. Uh, next version of uh, Tata Nexon, Tata Avenia also coming up with. Uh, a switchable uh, 400 volts configuration so 800 volts battery will be there either it can be connected in series or parallel so 400 400 two sets will come and maximum inverter efficient uh, frequency and power ratings power density and specific power all these things we can find here and in order to design a power train uh, we have to consider all these aspects so the summary of the uh, present discussion in the last five, six slides, whatever we have discussed, I have summarized here. We can see here different type of vehicles are presented at the left side of the slide and which type of motors we are utilizing on the right side I have mentioned here. So uh, only few manufacturers are coming up with three phase induction machines and few manufacturers are coming up with both machines like few tesla vehicles are utilizing permanent magnet machines as well as induction machines to cut down the rare earth magnetic materials and most of the vehicles are using permanent magnet based synchronous machines or bldc is nothing but a permanent magnet machine only so the challenge with respect to this uh, vehicles will be the rare earth magnetic materials so we have to avoid the rare earth magnetic materials because we don't have any resources and if we have resources also to produce the magnets, it will result in a lot of uh, pollution and global warming. Again, it is not a sustainable solution. So one challenge with respect to the existing uh, uh, architectures will be permanent magnets usage. 
and the rating of the machine is not uh, limited right it is keep on increase, increasing i have shown till 630 kilowatt and it may not be limited also so to handle this higher power ratings three phase solutions are may not be feasible three phase machines so power per phase will be for example 600 kilowatt is there power per phase will be 200 kilowatt and associated power electronic devices also handle that much power and that much uh, voltages accordingly. So power per phase and torque per phase will be very high and uh, higher ratings of the semiconductor. So to meet high power requirement, so three phase solutions will be more bulky and the fault tolerant capability also coming down. So that's why we can go, we can think some alternative solutions. The answer is multi-phase machines. I will explain the different type of multi-phase machines and what are the advantages. And to uh, get the different torques and different speed, I have shown the multi-motors like dual motor, three tri motors and etc. So this also eventually increase the crop rate of the uh, vehicle. Even though advantages we are getting, there are other side challenges are there. And gearbox or transmission systems we are utilizing either it can be single speed or two speed transmission systems. The compared to electrical components, the mechanical component uh, maintenance as well as uh, efficiencies are lesser. Because of that reason, how we can avoid the gearbox systems and transmission systems, we'll see with respect to the multi-phase machines. And the crucial thing is the thermal management. We have to see how efficient way we can make the thermal thing. So the aspects will be, we have to uh, future aspects or future innovations in what areas required means to reduce the mechanical gearbox or to at least reduce the footprints of the mechanical gearbox and maintenance things. And second thing is magnetless machines to meet the same kind of torque speed characteristics. High, it should be highly fault tolerant, even though whenever we are traveling, either it can be fault from the machine side, fault from the battery side, or power converter side, the drivetrain should not stop delivering the power to the vehicle. It should deliver with reduced rating such that we can travel from faulty location to the garage. And the third, the fourth thing will be how to handle the high uh, situation with respect to the reduced ratings of the semiconductor dividers. For example, 600 kilowatt inverter we have to design. So how to design that thing with the lesser ratings of the semiconductors. And efficient design with respect to the different material, selecting by different materials and cutting down the mechanical footprints. So overall efficient design of the machine as well as powertrain is a uh, key aspect. And the uh, available machines with respect to the uh, non rare magnet one is induction machine, one is DC machine, other is reluctance machines. Either it can be switched reluctance machine or synchronous reluctance machine. The, each and every mission has certain challenges. Induction machine also has certain challenges. To meet the same performance of the permanent magnet machine is not possible with these machines. But we have to make some innovations such that we can compete with permanent magnet machines. So the challenges with respect to the DC machines we all are know that brushes and the challenges with respect to the reluctance machine is it will take higher current to deliver the torques, higher torques and the only torque component is the reluctance component. Reluctance component is nothing but attraction of iron piece towards the magnetic uh, material or a magnet. In induction machine, the challenges are uh, torque as well as uh, the efficiency aspects. We are able to achieve 90 to 95%. Still further, higher efficiency is required and starting time, higher uh, torques required. If you will get higher torque at starting, running condition will be poor. Or if you will get the uh, study condition, efficiencies are higher, then starting torques we have to compromise. So how to attain both will be a challenging task. We have to work in that areas. These are the few innovations required in respect to the machines. At the end, again, we'll see this slide. But now I will focus on the induction machine, how we can overcome the uh, situation for starting as well as the running condition. Both requirements I have to fulfill. Starting torque, higher torque, and running higher speeds. So we can see here 
top speed characteristics of ic engine as well as the electrical machine whether it can be pmsm or any type of machine the top speed characteristics will be like this for electric vehicle and for uh, ic engine it will be like this so during starting condition we will operate in gear 1 or gear 2 right so there it can generate higher torques and during running condition we will operate in gear or gear 4 where it can generate higher speeds the challenges with respect to this kind of uh, vehicles will be non eco friendly and lower efficiency and footprints are very high and uh, maintenance cost also will be very high whereas in the electric vehicles we can see uh, it will operated in constant torque region as well as constant power region by flux weakening things to reach to meet the starting requirement as well as running requirement the challenges already we have discussed permanent magnets three phase solutions and footprints with respect to the transmission or gearbox system and other than this the running condition may initial days we will see some maintenance cost will be very high slowly it will come down how the way the way how the electric vehicle cost is coming down same way the maintenance cost also will come down the example we can say like Uh, if any fault happen in inverter ic or uh, inverter pcb or onboard charger pcb we can't replace minute diodes or minute capacitors so it will take lot of time to replace the that particular component in the complete board if it is under warranty we will get for free of cost but if it is not under warranty it will be they will replace complete uh, charger or complete inverter board so it will be a slightly costly later if technology del uh, advancements happens and then with respect to the skill sets of the service stations we can uh, see the lesser maintenance cost so the mechanical power equation will be we can see here for an electrical machine power is directly related to the how much torque we are generating and how much speed we are getting at that particular point we can't uh, combine peak torque as well as peak speeds those to our different uh, operating points it's not possible only the thing is at at a given particular point what can be the torque and what can be the speed if we will able to see then we will get the power and the synchronous uh, speed equation for an any uh, induction machine machines we will see 120 by f by p and torque equation of the machine is directly related to the number of poles so with respect to this relation torque is directly related to the number of poles can we change the number of poles for example one machine is designed for four pole four pole mode other machine is de uh, designed for 12 pole mode initial case you assume that two machines are there one mission is coming to the starting condition other mission is coming for running condition where the starting condition 30 newton meter it is generating and during running condition four pole machine is coming into the picture and it is generating 10 newton meter so by any uh, you know, we are adapting some kind of technique and which is capable to generate these two kind of uh, pole operation then we can get these two requirements right so that is the concept of pole phase modulation by using this pole phase modulation and taking into the consideration of winding configuration like the how we can change the number of poles by selecting a winding configuration we can attain these two requirements without using two different machines so here we have assumed that one machine will be four pole and other machine will be 12 pole right whereas in the pole phase modulated machines same machine with the same winding we can get the four pole operation as well as 12 pole operation how to attain all those things we'll see in the coming slides but it is possible if it is possible we can design any type of machine to match the five speed ic engine torque speed characteristics we have developed the 45 phase machine which can be operated in two pole six pole as well as 10 pole 18 pole and pole. so you can see here five different torque speed operating zones each and every uh, torque speed operating zone we are operating the machine at different phases at different uh, poles by changing the number of phases and poles by utilizing the power electronic converter we can attain all these characteristics and in running condition starting condition the induction machine uh, performance will be poor with respect to the power factor and magnetizing currents 
and uh, uh, inductances, magnetizing inductances. Whereas in the running condition, we can see the higher efficiencies. With respect to the pole phase modulating uh, drives, we can uh, overcome those aspects and we can get the higher efficiencies also. And we can generate different torques by utilizing the same machine. That means we can eliminate the complete transmission system, right? We can see here there is no gearbox system because the machine itself is capable to give torque speed characteristics. Along with that, better power distribution per phase also we can see here. Same 600 kilowatt we are designing for three phase machine and 600 kilowatt for 45 phase machine. 600 by 45 will be the per phase power in this kind of systems. 600 by 3 is nothing but power rating of the uh, three phase systems and higher fault tolerant capability. If by any chance, any converter side failure or uh, battery side failure or machine side failure, the machine is capable to deliver the reduced rating of the power such that we can travel from the faulty location to the service station. And maximum power can be captured during regenerative braking. We can see here this dotted line P2 curve is the power curve of the conventional three phase machine. And P1 curve, this, uh, this solid uh, brown line is the P11, P1 power line of the multi-phase machine with pole phase modulated drive. If we will apply a brake at this instant, assume that we are operating at a speed of NS by 9. So we will get the power this much only. So are you, we, if, you are, if I am not wrong, are you able to see my cursor? So we can see the amount of power which is capable to re, uh, do the regenerative braking, we can see here. Whereas in the proposed uh, multi-phase machines based pole phase modulated drives, uh, the maximum power we can capture it during regenerative braking. And better thermal management also. Why better thermal management can be possible means the per phase coming, per phase power down and per, uh, per phase ratings of the semiconductor device also coming down. And uh, we have to, we can distribute the heat dissipation to the different different locations such that thermal management we can uh, do uh, easily. And why multi-phase machine? Is there any lim number limitation like why not uh, six phase, why not nine phase or why not 45 phase machine? Any number of phase machine we can utilize it. Depends upon the application and depends upon the requirement. But the advantages are same for all type of multi-phase machines. One is higher efficiency by reducing the uh, stator IF square R losses. Uh, it will not be a huge improvement with respect to the efficiency. One or two percent we can improve with respect to the stator copper losses. So these copper losses are significant for high power rating machines. So with there we can get the significant improvement in efficiency. Whereas in the low power machines like 50 kilowatt or less than that ratings, we will see one or two percent only. And I already mentioned better power distribution. We can see here power or torque. One third is shared by each phase. For nine phase machine, one ninth is shared by nine phase machine. And fault tolerant capability, we can see here if one or two phases becoming faulty, it means in three phase system, complete system, we have to be shut down. Whereas in nine phase machine, even though one, two, or three, till n, n minus three uh, phases faulty, or n minus three number of phases are healthy, we can operate the machine. And the voltage and current ratings of the uh, devices also will come down. Either voltage will come down by three times. And see here, then multi-phase system uh, drive. Either voltage can come down by three times or current can come down by three times. Only one variable can come down by three times by maintaining the same power. And the torque we can enhance by injecting the high, uh, lower order harmonics and lesser space harmonics we can see here. Uh, in the three phase system, fifth and seventh are the lo uh, lower order dominant harmonics, whereas in the multi phase machine for nine phase example, 17th and 19th are the dominant lower order harmonics. And the magnitudes will be very small for the 17th and 19th, whereas for 5th and 7th, magnitudes will be very high. So how we are changing the poles in a single machine with respect to the winding configuration, we will see now. 
So during high pole combination, it will deliver the high torque, and during low pole combination, it will deliver the higher speeds. How we can change the number of poles means we can with respect to the simple formula. Q is nothing but uh, number of slots, and P small p is nothing but pole pairs, and Q is the slots per pole per phase, and M is the number of phases. So in order to change from one combination to other combination, these formulas we have to utilize. So here K is the pole change ratio. For example, two pole to four pole we are changing. That means pole change ratio is two. So what way we have to change? Can we change from two pole to six pole, or two pole to four pole, or two pole to uh, ten pole? What can be the ratio? Whether it can be odd integer or uh, even integer? All those aspects we can uh, get it in the coming slides. So let us take the twenty-four slot three-phase two-pole winding. Uh, machine and we can see here the winding single single layer winding uh, distributed each phase is occupying four slots from this point to this point four slots it is occupied and next phase will be at 120 after 120 degrees right in a three phase system for a symmetrical thing all phases should be displaced by 120 degrees a is at 0 b is at 120 c is at 240 the return conductors of a b c is will say between the Two positive conductors. Here C is there, and here B phase return conductors are there. Here A phase return conductors are there. So 180 degrees apart from positive to return conductors. We can see the same thing. Apply a simple thumb rule. So all positive conductors current is going in, and all return conductors current is coming out. So current is coming out means anti-clockwise direction flux lines we can see here. Current is going in means clockwise flux lines we can see. So the cumulative uh, resultant flux lines we can see here how the two poles are forming inside the machine. So if we are trying to change from two pole to four pole, we have to reverse or uh, we have to change the current direction of the windings or excitation of the windings we can say current direction we are not. Uh, Uh, even though ultimately current direction reversal will happen but excitation with respect to the few windings we are changing with res by utilizing the power electronic converter so the red color highlighted one is the new phase excitation black color one is the same as this two pole excitation so here a a came and next two conductor c dash c dash came so the return conductors of c phase uh, like we are assuming these two windings are excited as a c phase so same way i mentioned here so the flux lines will come in this fashion so the poles formations we can see here so the red color one is the uh, current is coming out and blue color one is the current is going in okay resultant flux lines if you'll see again it is forming two pole only from two two pole to four pole if you are trying to change also again it will form into two pole combination only so there is no change in number of poles such that there is no change in torque speed characteristics okay ideally so in order to change the number of poles we should uh, see some other possibility like two pole to six pole or two pole to eight pole will be the next combination right so with even number of change in uh, pole on change in pole ratios we are not able to change the uh, poles next we We'll see some condition with respect to the odd change in number of poles. Here also, I am showing one uh, example from two pole to eight pole. Still, we can see some uneven uh, pole formation, like six poles only forming. We tried for eight pole, but here six poles are only forming. This green color highlighted one are the two unsymmetrical poles or bigger poles, and remaining. Four poles. This one and this one and this one. This one are the smaller poles. So unsymmetrical torque and unsymmetrical actions will come in the picture. It will deteriorate the machine lifetime and it can uh, it may fail the bearings also. So pole change ratio two also not possible with respect to the earlier slide and pole change ratio four also not possible with respect to the present case. so in order to change the number of poles from one combination to other combination should be a odd positive integer the pole ratio should be odd positive integer the example we can see here same uh, i have taken here 18 slot three phase two pole winding 
so now we are changing from this pole so the same uh, winding like a phase has three conductors and here uh, a phase is excited as a three phase manner initially a phase then c phase then b phase and followed by a c b like that with respect to the symmetrical excitation of 120 degrees here we can see that clear uh, observation where uh, six poles are forming symmetrically with respect to the a c dash b one pole and written conductors of a a dash and the positive conductor of c and b dash is forming another pole and same way like six symmetrical poles are forming from changing from two pole to six pole like how we are changing i will tell in the coming slides by utilizing the power converter for now just uh, follow how and what We are changing the number of position to six pole or two pole to ten pole. Odd uh, ratio should be there in order to change from one pole combination to other pole combination. So let us take an example. Now I will explain how to change the number of poles. Thirty-six lot nine phase four pole winding machine. First we will see how we can make the uh, winding. So I have taken 36 slots. Okay, nine phases means all uh, windings has to be displaced by 360 by nine. That is 40 degrees electrical. So here we can see all windings are uh, displaced by 40 degrees electrical. Right format we can see here. Then B is at 40 degrees electrical. C is at 80 degrees. Followed by till i phase ninth phase that is at 320 degrees same way for next uh, pole pair each pole pair is electrical equivalent of 360 degrees and mechanical equivalent of 180 degrees for four pole machine so same thing we can visualize here so the first uh, phase is sitting in this slot a phase conductor the a phase return conductor is coming here in 10th slot as per this winding diagram so this is the f phase winding so a phase has two terminals this is starting and this is ending same way all nine phases we will get a total of 18 terminals outside so starting all dots are starting and remaining all are uh, endings ending of that particular phase so here we are taking 18 terminal outside if you want to make so nine terminals are sufficient to bring it outside all nine phases Starting terminals, we have to bring it out. And the second ending terminals, we can make it star either in, uh, inside the machine or outside the machine. So for three phase, six terminals, we will see outside, right? To connect either in delta or star manner. So for nine phase, we can bring it out 18 terminals or nine terminals. So this is the machine. We can see here, this is the nine phase induction machine. So nine terminals are connected to the nine phase two level inverter. So these are the nine phase current and how flux uh, loops will form we can see here apply a simple thumb rule. So I am taking at this instant. So a phase has positive current we can see here. So yeah with respect to the positive current here current is in and here current is out and again at uh, a current is in direction and here current is out. So flux lines are anti-clockwise direction. So with the same way, we can see the current instant. Where, like for example, for C phase, it is a positive current. So wherever C positive conductor is there, we will see the positive uh, cross. And wherever the C is there, we will see the dot, the where current is coming out. So if we uh, visualize the flux lines formation, how the flux lines are forming. Like this, all flux lines with respect to the individual conductors we can see. So if we'll see uh, closely from this point to this point, all flux lines are in one direction. So these flux lines will form one loop, one bigger loop. And same way, four flux loops will form. And these flux loops are nothing but here flux lines are current is uh, flux lines are coming there towards right to left, right? So and going towards this way. So with respect to 
the flux lines flow we can define the north pole and south south pole wherever the flux lines are coming in uh, coming in means that is the north pole and coming uh, going away from the pole means that is the south pole and the way how four poles are forming we have seen here so with respect to the same nine terminals by changing the excitation here excitation we have given 360 by 9 right 360 40 degrees we are giving so if we will change the excitation how we can change the number of poles i will show now so this is the nine phase inverter structure or power converter so nine windings are there and nine phase four pole mode we have seen all are displaced by 40 degrees and three phase 12 pole mode three three windings we are grouping as a one set of winding assume like uh, in a three phase machine three windings are in parallel are excited with same uh, fundamental so three phase 12 pole mode the three three windings will get the same fundamental excitation such that three phase symmetrical rotating magnetic field will form whether it is possible with respect to the mechanical arrangement or not we can see here so this is the winding table for nine phase four pole mode we can see a phase is connected a phase coil is connected to the 10th coil and g phase coil is connected to the uh, 13th coil so as per the three phase 12 pole combination if i want to make a winding diagram so first pole to 12 pole means 360 by 12 right so the pole so from first slot to fourth slot i need a conductor like uh, in the first slot current should go in and fourth slot the whatever the conductors are placed in the fourth slot current should come out so the same thing we can observe here even though coil pitch is different as per our initial winding coil is connected from first slot to 10th slot and then 13th slot to fourth slot coming back so current is going in from the first slot and going out from the 10th slot again coming in in the 13th slot and going out from the fourth slot so whatever it may be the winding position i need first slot whatever the conductors we have that should get the zero degree fundamental current is going in and fourth slot zero degree fundamental current coming out so the blue color highlighted one we can see here same thing is happening here with respect to this particular excitations 0 degree 120 degree and 240 degrees so a a phase and g phase winding with respect to the excitation i have shown here so this is the mission where all 36 terminals are taken out if not only nine terminals are required to make this uh, drive time so these are the winding uh, table or winding disposition with respect to all uh, nine phase four pole as well as three phase 12 pole so the difference is a phase d phase and g phase are displaced by 120 degrees in nine phase four pole mode electrical as well as mechanical manner whereas in uh, three phase 12 pole mode the windings are mechanically displaced we can see here or and fourth slot and first slot and seventh slot these three windings are mechanically displaced but electrically getting same fundamental so if electrical electrically in phase means flux will be in phase and we will get the three phase rotating magnetic fields so in three phase 12 pole mode how we are getting the 12 pole uh, uh, flux loops we can see here same way consider any instant uh, in this cycle one fundamental cycle a is positive b uh, is positive and c is negative i have taken one instant with respect to that apply a simple thumb rule and uh, we can uh, see the different flux loops forming in the machine so 12 poles are formed here by simply changing the excitation with respect to the machine how to control the torque and speeds we can see with respect to the vector control aspects and controlling aspects so first technically how the poles are changing visually i am showing here so these are the flux loops for 36 slot machine nine phase four pole and three phase 12 pole so we can see how the flux lines are uh, uh, like rotating magnetic field is happening inside the machine this is the uh, like theoretically we are analyzing with respect to the simple thumb rule so the same thing how 
uh, ANSYS Maxwell simulations or EM simulations, we can get it. I will show in the next slides. So here we can see whatever we have seen in the earlier slide, theoretically with respect to the thumb rule, and same thing is matching with respect to the ANSYS Maxwell simulations. So the four pole, how the flux lines are forming and Weber per meter also we can see here. Uh, 1.0392 and here 1.0368. 1 so the flux magnitudes are changed that much drastically. Flux is seen, flux magnitudes, and only the extra one by changing the number of poles we are getting. One is in three phase 12 pole mode because of the higher number of poles. Torque is directly related to the number of poles we are getting high starting torque, and during running condition, we are getting. Uh, higher speeds that is nine phase four pole mode of operation. Intermittent speeds and torques we can attain by utilizing the vector control or any type of uh, controlling mechanism. So to design a drive train for any vehicle traction applications, we require two conditions, right? That's what we have started initially, uh, initial stages of this presentation. So both conditions we are meeting without using the mechanical gearbox. In the existing electric vehicle, Along with one single torque speed characteristics or one single torque speed zone, we are using single speed or two speed transmission system. Whereas in this kind of variable pole or pole phase modulated induction machine drives, no need of mechanical single speed or two speed transmission systems. If requires also, the footprints will be very small and the overall drivetrain efficient, uh, overall drivetrain efficiencies will be very high. And uh, regenerative capability and fault tolerating and thermal management device uh, ratings, everything can be add an advantages for this kind of drives. So this is the summary with respect to the different pole phase modulated induction motor drives. So we have worked on nine phase machine, which is capable to deliver two different type of torque speed characteristics. One is three phase 12 pole, other is nine phase four pole machine and uh, 15 phase machine where it is capable to deliver the three different type of torque speed characteristics. Assume that it is equivalent of three gear system in a IC engine based vehicle. If we have three gears means three type of torque speed characteristics we will get right same way here also. So the 15 phase machine we are operating in 10 pole, 6 pole and 2 pole combination such that we can get the different torques. And the 45 phase machine so there is no limitation with respect to the number of phases. The limitation comes out with respect to the application aspect. For example, this 45 phase machine with 45 leg inverter, I can't use it for two wheeler. Okay. So the same 45 phase machine, if I am designing for 600 kilowatt or 1000 kilowatt, then this 45 phase machine will be the feasible solution and efficient solution also. For low power and uh, two wheelers and three wheelers, it is not a feasible thing. Only nine phase thing can be feasible for three wheelers and four wheelers. For two wheelers, we can't uh, develop the nine phase system because of the uh, uh, volume constraints and size constraints. So this is the torque uh, relation and power relation, basic relation and conventional IC engine torque speed characteristics and conventional electric vehicles torque speed characteristics. Also, we can see here this is the flux weakening region and this is the starting high torque uh, region where we are operating in a constant torque region. So this is the summary with respect to the existed power electric power trains and proposed multi-phase machine uh, pole phase modulated drives. So first uh, row is the IC based thing. I have considered the Mahindra XUV 300 vehicle here and where power rating is 83 kilowatt and 1200 cc engine six speed transmission system or six stage gearbox maximum torque is 300 newton meter and weight of the crub weight of the vehicle is uh, uh, 180 kgs 180 kgs is the uh, machine weight or engine weight and 1400 is the uh, total crub weight of the vehicle and vehicle cost will be 15 lakhs and uh, remarks will be in it is not a eco friendly system and lower efficient with respect to the existing electric vehicles, Tesla Model S and Porsche Taycan and Nissan Leaf, the maximum torque is 600 kilo, uh, 600 Newton meter and torque per phase also we can see 
150 or 200 newton meter is coming per phase and rating of the machine is 310 kilowatt for tesla model s and 600 kilowatt for uh, tesla cyber truck we have seen that also in the initial slides porsche take on is 420 kilowatts so this power rating is not limited right so for example same uh, type of uh, power rating of the machine if we will design with the multi phase or multi stage whole phase modulated drives we we have developed the laboratory prototypes for 5 hp machines and uh, for ideal aspects i have uh, scaled up to 370 kilowatt all uh, into 10 times uh, 100 times gain factor i have considered here and uh, torque maximum torque how much we can generate is 4500 newton meter we can generate with 370 kilowatt of the machine ratings and torque per phase is 500 newton meter so with the same rating we can with the same rating we are able to generate almost uh, 10 uh, 10 times or 9 times the higher torques compared to the tesla model s here 310 kilowatt motor here also 370 kilowatt motor and uh, the maximum torque generated with respect to this vehicle is 600 newton meter here 4500 is possible on top of that additional advantages are higher fault tolerant and no magnets and the reduced footprints of the transmission overall cost with respect to the maintenance will come down in terms of mechanical gearbox and same way 15 phase machine and 45 phase machine we can see here with 45 phase machine we can generate 7000 newton meter so these are the few advantages with respect to the torques and speeds and efficiency aspects and all the advantages this is the overall summary with respect to the different power lines this is the control diagram for nine phase four phase modulated induction motor drives so we can see here this is a simple uh, vector control vector control uh, diagram for three phase and nine this type of machines is same almost only the thing is we have to select mode of operation where we have to use the three phase 12 pole mode of operation where we have to use the nine phase four pole mode of operation we know it fundamentally during starting condition three phase 12 pole mode we have to utilize during running condition nine phase four pole mode we have to utilize according to that mode of selection the gain factors will change with respect to the speed related terms and transmit uh, conversion terms and these are the open loop results from three phase 12 pole to nine phase four pole and the speeds these are the speed reference and speed actual we can see how it is tracking and the reference uh, Currents, ID current, IQ currents. Also, we can observe here. And a few uh, developments at uh, my previous institute at uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. At IIT Indore, recently only I joined one week back. So that's why lab setup I am showing from with respect to the my previous institute. And this is the electric vehicle. Uh, what we have developed, and this is the induction machine, 15 kilowatt and 300 hertz in the induction machine. and these are the pole phase modulated induction motor drives for electric vehicles and uh, this is a and uh, with respect to the fault tolerant aspects how we can explore the pole phase modulated induction motor drive also we can see here this is the uh, structure proposed inverter it is also a modular structure and dc dc converters also in a modular structure and batteries also in modular structure if or in dc structure or machine side the complete system we can reconfigure it as a three phase system and we can drive the vehicle in three phase 12 pole mode continuously with lesser speeds and uh, torque will be as per the requirement and power rating will be reduced accordingly either it can be the switch faults or battery side fault this inverter is capable and one more advantage with respect to the uh, multi phase machines so uh, before switching to the three phase 12 pole mode to the four pole mode so we can use an auxiliary inverter structure which is equipped with ultra capacitor bank which can be delivered only for shorter duration uh, for acceleration times or during hill climbing application it will come and deliver the uh, energy for uh, in a shorter duration and it will go back for charging purpose again 
like it will be continuously charging for longer duration it will deliver the energy within the known time as per the requirement so it will give the fault tolerant capability with respect to the battery aspects for shorter duration and it will help for the battery uh, uh, lifetime also because if we will draw the higher currents from the battery the life cycles will reduce and battery lifetime also will come down so it will support for the battery in terms of lifetime improvement as well as the efficiency aspects of the full drive train and additional one more innovations with respect to the induction machine to meet the both aspects as i discussed earlier if uh, during starting condition if we want higher torque we have to increase the rotor resistance but if we will increase the rotor resistance the running condition performance will be very poor efficiency will be very less so to meet this both aspects starting torque as well as running higher efficiency so we can uh, design a rotor structure with superconducting based magnetic materials so the superconductor properties are whenever the temperature is higher than the critical temperature it will offer very high resistance whenever the uh, material temperature is less than critical temperature the resistance will be very less or zero it is eventually so can we utilize these two regions one region is high resistance region where temperature is high and other region is if you in the temperature of the material less than the critical temperature resistance will be almost zero so the same thing we can observe here torque speed characteristics one will be the conventional induction machine torque speed characteristics will be like this and the other one will be the superconductor based uh, magnetic material which is used for rotor squirrel cage rotor bars are designed with superconductor materials the challenges here are how to make the cooling system for that complete machine we have to uh, keep in the oil chamber or glycol chamber or continuous water cooling is required so some challenges will be there but advantages will be both things we can attain uh, by utilizing the superconducting materials how we are attaining means starting condition definitely motor will draw the higher currents with respect to the higher currents the temperature will increase once the temperature is high it will offer higher resistance so high starting star we can develop during running condition we have to bring the temperature of the machine less than the critical temperature and one more advantage with respect to the uh, multi phase machines are we can design the integrated on board chargers integrated on board chargers are nothing but the machine and inverter which we are utilizing for driving the vehicle we can see here battery structure is there dc to ac we are converting and motor is there so we are driving the vehicle with respect to the uh, torque and speed requirements but for charging application same machine we are utilizing and same converter we are utilizing in a opposite manner like this machine inductors we are machine windings we are utilizing as a filter inductors and from this side ac to dc conversion bidirectional visibility and we are charging the battery the only challenges with respect to this type of integrated on board chargers are one thing is vehicle to grid is not possible because uh, in this direction battery to dc dc to ac converter and through motor it is going back to grid right so the positive direction of power will eventually results as motor is running running right if motor is running means we can't feed the power to grid right so that is the thing and uh, driving and charging both can't happen simultaneously because same equipment we are utilizing for both cases and uh, isolation or uh, isolation or safety issues are minimal because the vehicle ground as well as the once the grid is connected to the system the vehicle uh, grids grid uh, ground also will be same there is a chance of uh, uh, protection there is a chance of failure uh, cases because of the grounding issues for that magnetic isolation generally is preferred but here that isolation is not possible with respect to the onboard charger only those three are the challenges but the advantage will be additional cost weight it and space everything we can reduce and uh, we can uh, design the high power rating chargers because if the drive train is designed for 600 kilowatt then uh, we can uh, design the 600 kilowatt charger directly no need to depend upon the 
off board charger or on board charger that is 22 kilowatt uh, chargers only here with respect to the inverter and motor ratings we can design the integrated on board charger so the additional advantage is fault tolerant capability again with respect to the charging we can see here one uh, block diagram or power converter diagram for uh, nine phase integrated uh, battery charger so either it can be single phase grid or three phase grid we can connect to the nine phase windings of the machine then nine leg inverter will come followed by dc dc converter to regulate the uh, battery requirements of the currents as well as voltage so charging control will do it by this dc dc converter and power factor correction and ac to dc conversion will be done by this three nine phase structure along with the machine windings so i am coming back to the same structure uh, same slide so the non rated magnetic materials are these three machines are there and we have only two objectives or two uh, things to achieve to design any machine for electric vehicle traction applications one is starting uh, high torque and running higher speeds for that with respect to the induction machine i have shown few innovations especially in terms of uh, multi phase machines and superconducting uh, magnetic materials so same way we can explore for reluctance machines by adding some windings at the rotor side also or some very less uh, amount of magnets pm assisted reluctance machines to increase the density and whereas in the dc machines also some kind of innovations with respect to how to eliminate the brushes and how to get the uh, efficient uh, systems without brushes sparking and slip rings and etc so those things are the uh, gaps with respect to the electric uh, electrical machines where the innovation is really required to meet the future uh, aspects and few references uh, with respect to the present uh, talk we can see here and uh, one patent application with respect to the present talk also we can see here so if anyone is interested they can go through this uh, patent and these references thank you if you have any questions please welcome hello sir hello 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 sir hello hello uh, pratap hello yes, sir. professor yes, sir. i think some someone is uh, trying to ask some queries yeah okay okay sir if you are anyone having any queries okay so Sir, if I, yeah yeah you please carry on yeah, ask uh, ah. yeah, uh, very good afternoon sir yeah good afternoon yes sir uh, although you have explained every aspect of electric uh, vehicle from the motor point of view and uh, the various techniques but uh, if possible and uh, uh, according to your report is uh, would you please tell us that why tesla has stopped the ev based on its own designed induction motor drive i mean any specific reason yeah the specific reason is uh, uh, the every they don't have the rare earth magnetic materials right if you will see the present any model initially they started with induction motor drives only yeah yeah only one drive yeah okay but now whatever the all wheel drives are coming in any type of model either it can be tesla model s or 3 or y or tesla cyber truck if all wheel drive is there means front and back both sides one drive unit will be there 
So one drive unit definitely they are keeping induction machine. Other drive unit they are uh, keeping the permanent magnet uh, synchronous machine. So in future definitely we will come. They will also look back to the in induction or synchronous reluctance machines. Fully, fully on that particular. Yeah, fully point. on those things because the magnetic reserves are not there. Okay. Okay. And uh, so that means, too, we are utilizing uh, magnets in all applications, right? Not only vehicles, each and every application, one or another way, we are utilizing the magnetic materials. So if millions of milli vehicles come to the picture or come to the roads, we don't have any magnetic materials. Okay, so means uh, the abundance of, uh, I mean, the availability of the particular magnet is the reason, could be the yes. reason. Yeah, okay. that is the main reason, nothing else. That's why, see, if I'll keep, both uh, drive units are a PMSM drives. There is no problem for me now. As you just yeah, think yeah, from yeah. the designer perspective, we will yes. get the higher torque densities, we will get the higher power, and we can make the compact size also. But why people are using one induction machine and one PMSM means they want to cut down some dependency on magnets. By yes. the same way, they want to they don't want to compromise on torque or some uh, power density aspects. Okay, okay. So they want to cover each and every aspect by using... Yes, design. yes. That's why. Yeah. That's why okay. one unit, they will keep induction machine, one unit, synchronous machine. In every of the manufacturing product they are making, I mean, it's a cyber trucks to uh, cars, one unit is PMSM and one is induction. Is it? Yeah. In uh, okay. I know all Tesla models are using same, but uh, <laughs> few manufacturers are using both are synchronous machines. We can I can show you Jaguar i is using... Both uh, synchronous uh, uh, permanent magnet synchronous machines. Okay, you can see here permanent magnet yeah. synchronous motor only they are utilizing. Both are. If all wheel drive model is there. Same way, uh, RD e tran also two permanent magnet synchronous machines only. So the people will think towards the rare earth magnetic materials, then they will come up with first solution will be one induction and one permanent magnet machine. The people are already doing that thing, Tesla people. <laughs> and the second, soon they will come up with uh, magnetless machines. Okay, soon we can see that on the roads, the magnetic yeah. motors will be replaced by this kind of induction or yes, fully reluctance motor index. Yeah, so the okay. strongest competitor will be induction machine or synchronous reluctance machine or switched reluctance machines. Either reluctance okay. or induction. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Is there any other queries from the Hello? participants? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, thank you for uh, so much for the presentation. Sir, actually, you have to mention that uh, the resources are trying to uh, means abandoning the uh, dependency over air earth and uh, trying to uh, switch for the other, uh, like you mentioned, like uh, reluctance motors. Sir. Uh, yeah, reluctance machines. And... Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You are telling something. Uh, SRM, sir, uh, uh, simultaneously makes the uh, Controlling uh, very complex, complicated because uh, drive circuitry, lots of switches have to be controlled. So in case of uh, uh, like PMSM or uh, other BLDCs, so uh, in this case SRMs we need uh, lots of switches and uh, means complicated uh, power electronic circuitry. So it makes the system difficult. So uh, no oh, right guys. SRM drive. Yeah, a switch reluctance machine drive unit is same as uh, uh, inverter structures only. The only thing is in switch reluctance machine, we can use bidirectional switches or simple one-way switch plus diode. Okay, the switch perspective, there is no much difference. Like uh, three-phase switch reluctance machine and three-phase uh, permanent magnet machine, inverter structure almost same. Okay, especially in terms of switch count and uh, drive uh, uh, drive cost wise and efficiency wise almost same where in a synchronous machine we are utilizing switch along with the anti-parallel body diode at one particular place for a switch reluctance machine we will split these two and we are utilizing as a two components for one phase 
sir i was uh, reading somewhere uh, they uh, talked about the uh, axial flux motor so is it a mature sir, or is it uh, in the uh, axial flux motor sir yeah axial flux motors people are working it still it is an error state only yeah it is a, it is also a good uh, aspects to work in future we may we may see those kind of machines also thank you sir hello yeah hello hi namaste sir it's me yogini pandya from gujarat sir i have yeah. one question is, uh, from my side is that uh, you said that there is a high power and high torque machines electrical motors are utilized in ev so there is a one question for the thermal management sir so can you focus yeah. uh, on the uh, point regarding to ev sir regarding ev Uh, EV, yes, yes. Induction. Uh, we utilize induction motors. Uh, so, in which parts uh, we can implement the thermal management by using some uh, what uh, micro channels or etc. Mini channels. So, yeah, can you yeah. focus on this uh, matter, sir? Yeah. In this presentation, I have not shown, but in the presentation what I have shown is different type of thermal materials I have summarized in this slide. See, okay. uh, wherever the heat dissipation is there see the thermal management the first point is we have to find out the heat sources okay. like winding is the dominant uh, part right heat generation yes, will be sir. very high in the winding and then yes. bearings uh, stator and rotor windings is the first thing and then windings then laminations with respect to the id currents and the core losses yes sir so all this heat sources first we have to identify or hot spots we have to identify according yes, to that we have to go ahead with either it can be air cooled or liquid cooled liquid cooled means uh, nor within the limits means we can go ahead with uh, water channels okay, and then uh, still better cooling is required means glycol and uh, other liquids we can utilize it definitely some uh, vents will be there through channels only we will cool down the winding temperatures as well as the surface temperatures okay sir. okay 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 sir thank you thank you so much <laughs> yeah are you able to see my slide now yeah to answer to the last question in detail hello i think hello? Uh, yeah last yes, question yeah yes, so you sir, can see this uh, slide ma'am yeah you yes, can sir. see this slide ma'am so yes. how the winding is uh, Uh, cooled with respect to the channels. This is the inverter portion, and this is the machine portion. So, okay. with, this is with respect to the RD heatron liquid cooling. Okay, so, sir. the channels we can see here. So, the uh, okay, purple color one is the motor one, and blue color one is the uh, power electronic uh, inverter cooling. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, sir, myself Dev Chandra Singh. I'm from Northeastern Region and Institute of Science and Technology, Arunachal Pradesh. Sir, I uh, want to ask one question. Yeah, from please. Your please. Slide number thirty-seven, sir. Thirty-seven. Okay. Let me wait for that. Yeah. Sir, first of all, your presentation was very nice, sir. uh thank you yeah thank you for giving the uh compliment. sir i yeah. think yeah i i think i had a mistake sir please go to the previous slide i wanted to uh check on yeah. your nine phase uh, where you have a eb to uh grid system uh, where you you have a single phase and three phase yeah this one uh, yeah, yeah I, this one right 
uh, I think, yeah, this one, sir, this one. Thank you. Yeah. 41. Yeah, it is. Uh, sir, uh, in this particular uh, uh, schematic diagram that you have shown, uh, you mean yeah. to say that uh, this particular scheme has a feature of uh, injecting to grid uh, either single phase and three phase, uh, either single no, phase no. or three phase? No, yes. here the integrated charger mean only we are drawing the power from the grid only. Either it can be single phase grid or three phase grid. We can take the power and we can charge the battery. Uh, I mentioned okay. that from battery to grid, it is not possible because okay. while taking the power from battery to grid, na, so this direction. So this right. direction, if we will take, motor will run, right? In this direction, if currents are flowing through the windings, hmm. so motor is, uh, is getting the all uh, excitation of the winding, so it will start running. Correct. Okay. So we can't uh, send the power to grid now. When vehicle is running condition or uh, moving condition, how we can feed power back to grid? That is one thing. And uh, ba battery to uh, grid feasibility, if it is standstill also, we have to, how, who will stop the motor? Okay, we should mm -hmm. not generate any torque and only we have to give the power to grid from battery. That is a challenging task. If anyone mm -hmm. is interested to work, they can work. How onboard charge integrated onboard chargers? How to send the power battery to grid vehicle to grid aspect? So basically, we have to isolate the motors first of all, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To enable that, because yes, most cases we are also like uh, looking forward to uh, like uh, transferring the energy from the battery to the grid as well. Yes. So yeah, I find it very interesting. Thank you, sir. Regards from. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Sir, uh, is it possible to uh, bypass uh, uh, the supply means, uh, means, uh, means dropping the supply to the motors and we can uh, bypass supply to the grid? I mean, is it possible? Yeah, it is possible. You have to think it down. You have to think and you have to come up with some smart solution. So you are telling we will bypass this motor and we will connect it like this, right? From the inverter output to the grid. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it is possible, absolutely. Technically, there is no wrong in it. So, but how feasible it is, like uh, how many additional relays or additional switches you will utilize it? You have to compare with respect to the existed onboard chargers and uh, this type of uh, chargers. You have to see in terms of cost, density, efficiency, and uh, uh, yeah, these three aspects, cost and efficiency and density and reliability or fault tolerant capability all these things you can verify if every every each and every aspect you are getting some positive then your uh, work will be novel and you will get some good amount of uh, publications and uh, uh, feasibility creditability also you will get it thank you sir yeah uh, sir, one more thing. Uh, sir, sir, are you working on the fast charging and uh, slow charging? There is constant current, constant uh, voltage charging schemes on your uh, proposed models. Uh, yeah, it generally it has to be constant charging and constant uh, constant current and constant voltage charging is the basic thing. So I'm not working any advanced uh, constant power or constant temperature kind of charging methods. Simple constant voltage and constant current, we are working on it. Okay, so this particular scheme that you are showing, uh, does it has a feature? Yes, it has a feature, right? So Switching the first to... stage is the right. yeah, first stage is the three phase inverter or three phase rectifier mode. AC to DC, it will convert and it will form a DC link here. Then once you have a DC link here, DC to DC okay. converter, right? Okay. So depends upon the battery current requirement. I will operate in a CC mode and depends upon the battery voltage uh, requirement once it reached to the voltage peak voltage level i will switch it to the constant voltage okay so what we will do right with respect to the soc of the battery okay so that will be uh so you will be taking the soc yeah. so from the soc yeah okay got it yes thank you so thank it you. will be done by this dc dc converter oh uh, fine fine thank you got it yeah, more details you can find in this paper. Of course, I have not worked in this area. I just show, showing here. I am just showing here 
the advancements okay. and innovation how can how we can do it with respect to multi phase machines uh sir regarding the uh, the thermal thing the design part sir which software you are uh, using sir for that purpose thermal thing we can do it either in ansi or we have to do the thermal model ourselves like uh, this car model and poster model you can take it rlc rlc models and then you can implement in matlab okay you have seen this uh, star, star kind of ladder kind of network and flight type of networks right that names are car models and uh, poster models for thermal design where uh, you will see r and c networks and if you are considering parasitics then you have to consider the inductive elements also in thermal modeling okay sir. thank you sir. okay is there any other queries yeah uh thank you all the participants thank you professor pratap for uh, delivering a wonderful session so i request now all the participants to please turn on their camera to take a snapshot along with the expert yeah one minute sir thanks for giving me this opportunity yeah yeah please turn on the camera off. yeah yes sir I hope my video is uh, visible right mm -hmm. Yes yes okay yeah, sir yeah you are you are visible uh, so there is an announcement for the validity function so i'll be requesting all the participants to join at uh, 3:30 uh, we will be having a validity for half an hour and uh, we'll be signing up uh, all formally thank you thank you pratap thank you professor thank, thank you thank yeah. you thank you all thank you